This tutorial shows how to load a dimension using Clover ETL. SRDIM Fund is a MySQL table that contains funding source information for a revenue item. This tutorial will load it from a spreadsheet, and as the spreadsheet is being loaded, a lookup table will be consulted to get the data to conform with other data sets. Start by creating the graph. I'm storing it in a subfolder of graph here. Now this will take or use four components XLS data reader for the input source and DB output table for the MySQL output. Two transformers reformat which is going to map the fields from the spreadsheet to the MySQL table and filter. Filter is going to remove out some extra rows so that the data is easier to process and there aren't any errors. Use the edge tool to hook up the ports, output to input, ending with the MySQL table, and I'll save. Next I'll create a database connection. And then I'll create some metadata. I'll start with the source file, which is an Excel file. I've copied all of my data files into a data in folder, so they show up quickly on this screen. And that looks good. I'm going to adjust the schema a bit here. I happen to know that there's some non-numeric values that are in for purely display purposes. I'll convert them all to string and this is something that can be sorted out a little later as the data is uh, brought into the system uh, by something like a filter or maybe some conversion in a reformat component. Next metadata I'll create is for the lookup file. Build something off of this uh, CSV file. It's a delimited file and the header contains the field names. And the last bit of metadata that I'll create will be the target table, which I'll pull from the database. Select the connection created in a previous step. Select SRDIM fund and I'll generate a query. And that's good for this transformation. And now also using the outline panel, create a lookup table. This is going to associate the metadata created previously with a specific file and an identifier, which I'll use in a CLT2 expression later on. keys I'll use are a source system name and the value that I want to look up. And that's ready.
The next step is to link up the metadata and some extra information with the components. I'll start off with a correction to some of the metadata. When I set these fields to type, I also need to go back in and clear out this format here. I'll do that for all the numeric fields. First step is to take the source input record and give it a actual file to process. This happens to be the same file that was used to form the metadata, but if you're working in a file processing loop, it'll likely be a different one. Provide similar information to the DB output table component. Start with a, selecting it connection and the connection will provide us with a table all the graphs edges right now are dashed indicating that it's missing some metadata so we'll tell each one which metadata to use for the spreadsheet it's going to use sheet one propagate that to the next component. This here, on the output side, we'll use SRDIMFUND. That's it. EXT filter is going to use a filter. I've got it stored offline here. This is a CLT2 expression that says ignore any empty rows that might come in from the spreadsheet. And lastly, in the reformat component, This is where we'll map the fields. Two of the fields, fund name and restricted, are going to map in a one-to-one -one correspondence with a target field, or, or they're going to not be processed. Unlike the system fund source field, which is going to take advantage of the lookup. Offline, I have some CLT2 saved, but we'll go over this here. What this is saying is there's a function called lookup that takes the simple lookup definition set up earlier. It uses two fields in a get statement to return a third field called fund source name. Now even this, the spreadsheet and the database happen to be using the same column names. This is the fund source name for the MySQL table. This is the fund source name for the Excel. If you see any discrepancy with this, uh, verify the syntax. It has changed from CLT1 to CLT2. And we'll map that to the field now. good. I have to make one adjustment to the syntax of the filter. Rather than using the Java not equal to null comparison, I'm going to use a CLT function called is null. It's the same type of logic. It's going to be removing empty records. And now that's set to run.